Hi everybody and welcome to TensorFlow Meets. I'm Lawrence Moroni and I'm delighted today to meet with Arun Subramanian from BHGE. And Arun, I know you've been doing lots of great stuff with probabilistic modeling. So for those of us who don't really understand probabilistic modeling, and could you tell us all about it? First of all, uh, uh, good morning and thank you for having me here. And uh, yeah, so probabilistic modeling and uh, probabilistic uh, theory generally is something that we've been using for several years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's mostly for modeling systems that have a combination of very complex phenomena coupled with things that we can't measure precisely. Okay. Right? And um, to just to give you a simple example, if I were to ask you to predict where a stone would land if you throw it, okay. then um, any high school student would tell you that uh, uh, they can calculate it precisely based on how fast you threw it and at what angle you threw the stone. Right? Okay. Now, if I were to add a little bit of uncertainty to it, saying I don't know exactly at what angle you threw the stone at, or what velocity you threw it at, and then maybe like wind shear and, and wind shear like and stuff okay. like that, then all of a sudden your predictions are no longer as precise. Right? Now, in a simple system like that, you can already see things starting to get complex. Imagine a complicated system in the real world, things can get much more complex okay. if you're trying to predict something precisely. So you're working on a lot of complex systems like this. Could you share some examples? Absolutely. So at BHGE and uh, broader GE, we work on a lot of complex systems. Uh, ex for example, uh, say designing uh, gas turbines okay. or trying to uh, predict uh, what a very large scale system like an offshore oil platform would do. Okay. We're talking about hundreds if not thousands of variables interacting with each other and um, most of the time you can predict or you can measure maybe a few hundreds if not a few tens of those variables. So how do you predict behavior of such complex systems and still have actionable meaningful outcomes from your models without knowing all the information about the system. That's really where we use probabilistic modeling. I see, okay, it sounds complex. So, so what is your approach to this? How do you, how do you get started? Fantastic, so we get started with uh, starting with the domain. So we understand the domain. So what I mean by domain is you might be a mechanical engineer, you might be an aerospace engineer, you might be a petrophysics engineer. You start with the understanding of the domain and marry that with traditional machine learning techniques. And that's been going on for several decades. That gives you a very good understanding of how to predict things precisely and that's what we call known knowns okay right? so we can predict the so known things known very knowns, right? exactly like core known area you can core area we can yep. start from and then we add a, a layer of probabilistics on top of it to say what are the things that we cannot measure precisely or measure at all okay. and that's where probabilistic modeling comes in and that is what I would call known unknowns okay right? an example of that would be say if I'm trying to predict um, how um, a crack is going to propagate in a particular component then then I need to know what is the temperature of that particular component, for example. I measure it to within plus or minus 10 degrees, but I don't know what that variation in temperature is going to do to my crack propagating. I see. Right? So yeah. that would what, that's what I would call known unknowns. Okay. And once I know what are the unknowns that I'm not entirely sure about, I can go say, okay, this is what is the impact of that on something real. There is another level of complexity where things that I don't know, I don't know. Got it. Right? And that's what I would call unknown unknown. Unknown unknowns, right. So I know it's a mouthful, but um, an example of that would be, say, you uh, have designed a system, you have put it out in the real world, you know some of the things that is going to affect that system. Right. But you're not entirely sure of everything that's going to affect the system. And that is that other everything, that is what we would call unknown unknowns. I see. Right? And most of the time in real world, you can predict something up to, say, 90% or 95% of the time, the last 5% is what surprises us. Okay. And um, in systems which are safety critical systems that are critical to keep up the infrastructure of the world, you can't necessarily have even a 1% uh, chance of something going down. Right? So for example, if power goes down, you need to be able to bring that back up very quickly. Right? So those are the kinds of things where unknown unknowns come into Okay, play. got yeah. it. So starting from the known knowns, then going to the known or knowable unknowns, and then there's the unknown. Unknowns. Uh, unknown. Yes. unknown unknowns. Exactly. Right? Okay, I yes. see. So, so you've gone from like known knowns to knowable known unknowns and then unknown unknowns. Unknown unknowns, right. And um, when you're trying to model systems that are highly complex and are extremely critical, you need to be able to predict things at all of those levels. Right. And um, even if you're not able to predict unknown unknowns, you need to know how much are you missing. Right, if an event like that happens, how would you respond to it? Right, that is really where unknown unknown comes. Right, so now bringing this then into just developing these things, you use TensorFlow probability, right? Yes, and we, we started with TensorFlow and then combined that with TensorFlow probability quite a bit. 
So could you tell us a little bit about how you use all that? Absolutely. So we started with TensorFlow for deep learning precisely. And um, when we, um, we got introduced to the TensorFlow probability team and uh, Josh Dillon specifically, what we realized was they were bringing extremely deep research concepts from the probabilistic world into a production world that is not generally common. Right. And we were able to mix the deep learning community with the probabilistics community we had within our own teams. Okay. Right. So uh, running a, a reasonably large data science team, what you have to do is mix teams that are not necessarily talking the same language. Okay. And TensorFlow allows us to do that very effectively because now a deep learning expert who doesn't understand probabilistics well can talk to a probabilistics expert who doesn't understand deep learning in the same language. Nice, so having that framework that they could work together was, was very powerful for me. Absolutely, and it helped scale both our teams as well as our deployments very quickly. Wow, so a lot of complex stuff that you've been working on, there must be somehow you got started to figure out this and you know, how did you learn all this? Absolutely, so I'm uh, not uh, a trained uh, data scientist by training. So I got into data science by accident. So I'm an aerospace engineer who had to solve very complex problems by mixing these co concepts right. together. So it's a very common story, by the way. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, one of the things that helped me a lot was trying to mix practical aspects with the deeply theoretical aspects. Mm -hmm. So for practical aspects, a book that I really love is um, called Doing Bayesian Data Analysis. Okay. And that gives, um, at least it gave me, quite a bit of understanding of how these are applied in the real world. But at the same time, thinking about probability requires people to think about solving problems in a very, very fundamentally different way. Because we're good at being trained at saying, here are the bunch of inputs, how is that going to get me one outcome? But if the same inputs give you multiple outcomes, that's a very different paradigm to think about. So um, a set of books uh, that helped me were from E.T. James, which is um, at a much more philosophical level of understanding probabilistics. I would urge folks to at least dabble in both the, the practical aspects as well as some bit of the philosophical aspects together. And if you look at the recent blogs from the TensorFlow team as well as the, the broader community in doing probabilistic deep learning, there's a lot of fantastic blogs out there that will help people get started as well. And I'd say one thing, I know you've written a couple of blogs yourself, there's another one on the way the way you've gone into a little bit more detail on what you've been talking about today. Absolutely, and we walked through the, th the three blogs because we wanted to walk through known knowns, known unknowns, and unknown unknowns and bring it all together. So the one that you're still working on is the unknown unknowns. Yes, and uh, we are uh, close to getting done with it and it's uh, getting published in the next month or so. So all that's on uh, blog.tensorflow.org. Right? Absolutely. So, so thanks so much, Arun, and thanks everybody for watching this episode of TensorFlow Meets. If you have any questions for me or if you have any questions for Arun, just please leave them in the comments below. And also in the description for this video, we'll put links to everything that we spoke about today so you can check them out for yourself. Thanks and see you next time. Absolutely. Thank you and thanks for having me.